How's it going, guys? So this is a medium difficulty question for pharmacology for step one. Very difficult question for me to discuss because this can easily be a 46-minute clip, but I'm going to keep things consolidated here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now I'll start the clip. 28 year old man, two month history of severe periodic headaches. He's six foot four, 175 pounds. He has pes planus and arachnodactyly. CT scan of the abdomen confirms the diagnosis. Prior to surgical intervention, the most appropriate pharmacologic therapy for this patient will decrease, which is the following. So he is tall and lanky, and he has flat feet. That's what pes planus means flat feet. This sound and long spider like fingers. This sounds like Marfan syndrome. Okay, it's not Marfan syndrome, but it sounds like it. We call this Marfanoid body habitus. Oid, O I D, means looks like but ain't. Fibrinoid necrosis and polyarteritis sendosa looks like fibrin, it ain't fibrin. Marfanoid body habitus looks like Marfan syndrome, it ain't Marfan syndrome. So when we combine Marfanoid body habitus with periodic severe headaches where CT of the abdomen confirms the diagnosis, they're talking about pheochromocytoma here which is a tumor of the adrenal medulla that secretes catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, causes paroxysmal, very buzzy word, which means periodic, paroxysmal hypertension. It's not constant hypertension, okay? Paroxysmal periodic hypertension uh, that can present as palpitations or headaches. So this, this is a very buzzy description for pheochromocytoma. And in someone who has marfanoid body habitus, this is meant to be Okay, you don't need to have every component of a men syndrome in a question for it to be the diagnosis. So men to be is going to be pheochromocytoma, marfanoid body habitus, uh, mucosal neuromas, which are a weird tumor that can appear in the oral cavity, uh, as well as medullary thyroid cancer. They can say the mom, because it's autosomal dominant, the men syndrome. So they can say the mom had a, a cancer removed from the neck. Okay. Uh, men 2A, you, you will also have pheochromocytoma and medullary thyroid carcinoma, but you instead of the instead of the mucosal neuromas and the marfanoid body habitus, you'll have parathyroid adenoma or diffuse foregland hyperplasia. And then men 1 will be uh, pituitary adenoma, uh, parathyroid adenoma or diffuse foregland hyperplasia, and pancreatic tumor such as Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Okay, so this is men to b and we have a pheochromocytoma. Now he's gonna have surgical intervention for this pheo, and we have to give him a drug first. And the question's asking, well, the drug we're gonna give, it's gonna decrease which the following, all right? So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choices A and B, aldosterone binding to the cell surface receptor versus intracytoplasmic receptor, both wrong answers, all right? So uh, you need to know that steroid hormones, such as aldosterone, cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, they all bind to intracellular receptors, very fucking high yield. Peptide hormones, such as prolactin in contrast, bind to cell surface receptors, all right? As I said, we can make this an extended clip. It's wrong answer because aldosterone has nothing to do with pheochromocytoma. Students often confuse this. Kahn syndrome is an aldosterone secreting tumor, tumor okay? So zona glomerulosa, uh, is where you have aldosterone secretion, uh, the adrenal cortex. So that's where aldosterone tumor, uh, aldosteronoma would be. And the question would give you low potassium, high sodium, high bicarb, high pH, uh, high CO2, okay? Wrong fucking answers here. Aldosterone synthesis, I mean, this would theoretically be angiotensin II receptor blocker, uh, such as valsartan, candesartan. Uh, angiotensin II will upregulate aldosterone synthase in the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex increase aldosterone synthesis. But once again, this isn't a con syndrome. This is not an aldosterone screen tumor. This is a pheochromocytoma. Choice D, angiotensin II synthesis. Wrong answer. This would be an ACE inhibitor, okay? Lisinopril, captopril. Um, this is not a RAS tumor, okay? Once again, these are just distractor answers, okay? We're not affecting RAS. This is pheo, secreting catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Choice C, heart rate. Wrong answer. This would refer to uh, beta-1 blockade, okay? So if we give a beta blocker in pheochromocytoma, that will actually kill the patient. Very high yield, you know that, okay? I can't emphasize that enough. Um, absolutely do not give a beta blocker in pheochromocytoma, all right? Um, 
if you give a beta blocker, because catecholamines, what they're going to do is bind to alpha and beta adrenergic receptors, all right? So if you block the beta receptors with like EG propranolol, the catecholamines are left to bind to alpha only. We call that unopposed alpha. Alpha 1 constricts your peripheral arterioles, which will cause a surge in your blood pressure. So if you give a beta blocker first to a patient as pheo, you're going to surge their blood pressure, kill the patient. Wrong fucking answer. Uh, peripheral vascular resistance is our correct answer. So we are going to give phenoxybenzamine, which is an irreversible alpha-1 blocker, okay? And as I just fucking said, alpha-1 will normally cause uh, constriction of the peripheral arterioles. So if you block alpha-1, you're going to decrease vascular resistance, okay? Super fucking high yield. Now, some students will get pedantic and be like, oh, I thought you can give beta blocker after uh, giving phenoxybenzamine. In theory, yes, you could. Okay, but just you, but you, nevertheless, you need to remove beta blocker from your line of thinking altogether for pheochromocytoma. You're going to give an alpha one blocker first. Okay, an irreversible alpha one blocker, phenoxybenzamine. I've had some students say phentolamine when I've asked them this question, which is a reversible alpha one blocker. It's not a terrible answer because you still want to block alpha one first, but irreversible phenoxybenzamine. That's how we treat pheochromocytoma. Uh, prior to removing it via surgical intervention. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.